What's going on, Vulcan Turtle family? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today, to of all days, today. Anyway, I always get asked the same question by you guys over on Twitter or Discord. Some of you even just call my house phone with that, that heavy breathing. Like, uh, But you always ask the same thing. What deck is going to win UIC? And I always say the same thing. Calm down. I'll tell you. Because I'm going to make a video on it. And you guys are going to not only believe the simplicity of this deck and how good it is, but also foam at the mouth on how you didn't think of this before. Because I'm telling you, this deck guaranteed is going to win UIC. So let's jump into the deck list. Look guys, most YouTubers won't tell you the secret sauce when it comes to actually winning these events. And now I myself, I've, I haven't won any of these events, but I've been around a little bit to pick up on some key things that could actually be very important coming to UIC. Remember, we're in post-rotation at that time, so we need to be ready for post-rotation. So, what deck is going to win UIC? Well, let's start off with your main dude. You've got yourself the Charmanders here. Baby, we need the Charmanders. These are all Heat Tackle Charmanders. Now, that 30 damage is very, very good. So, we definitely want to just play all of the Heat Tackle Charmanders. Next up, we do have ourselves the Charmeleon with Heat Tackle. You know, we just need the name the, to match. That's all. The, the name match is perfect. Now, there is another Charmeleon with an ability that is just awful. You never want to play that one. I'm pretty sure it's just terrible. It does less damage and more damage is always good. So, yeah, you definitely never want to play the other one. And you definitely never want to play any of the other Charmanders. Because this one, this is the key right here. Now, naturally, we're not going to be playing those without playing some Charizards, baby. Charizard is definitely one of the best cards in the game right now, and it is super powerful. The more prizes your opponent takes, the stronger it gets, which is always super good, right? Next up, we do have ourselves two Pidgey here. Now, it has that amazing Call for Family. This is the optimal Pidgey. You definitely want to be playing these Pidgeys. Call for Family is actually very good, being able to search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. It's, it's very nice in this new format, so we definitely want to play with those Pidgeys. And we wouldn't be playing Pidgeys if we weren't going to be playing the Pidgeots. The Pidgeot is very important. Being able to search your deck for any card and putting your hand super super powerful so that is almost the main pokemon lineup right there we do have a couple more cards now you can always kill your opponent with cuteness and i think that the slowpoke psyduck gx from uh uh that set you know the that that one right there i think this one which is definitely still in standard very good you could just you put this down and your opponent will probably go ah and then concede and if that's the case you're one up in the match and and you know you just try to find this homie again you slam him down and you're good to go so i i definitely think that you need to play one of these in your charizard decks or any deck that you're going to be playing in euic you definitely want to be playing that now the next card i have here is an extender card we do have this uh love land frog man uh i just call him uh wizard toad yeah, we play Wizard Toad because Wizard Toad, a lot of people don't know this about the Pokemon TCG. Wizard Toad directly evolves into the Red Eyes Black Dragon. So if you get this homie down and you have this in hand, you could just immediately, because of its awesome wizard powers, the minute you put him down, boom, you have yourself a, uh, a, a Red Eyes Black Dragon, which is so powerful in this new format. I mean, it does 2,400 damage. That's enough to knock out a Charizard right so you definitely want to at least be playing this one keep it on to the dragon theme now if your opponent isn't you know if they're heartless and they don't care about cute cards you can always put the fear of vader in them so you want to play one darth vader in this deck because once the sith lord comes down i feel like your opponent is going to absolutely freak out and concede the game hoping that they don't see it again in game two because the minute he comes out you you know there's trouble there's trouble brewing and they don't want any of it and they'll go gee willikers i don't think i can handle this i was not prepped for this i never tested against darth vader so they're probably going to scoop immediately seeing the dark lord now if they're not scared enough by the dark lord and if they aren't persuaded by the duck there's a couple things you can do now we do play one raigeki in here because you know if your opponent has all these pokemon in play you can play raigeki and just destroy them all they'll go straight to the discard your opponent will have no active no benches you however 
Now, the fun thing about the, the, the wizard frog, right? The wizard toad here is unaffected by Regeki. And also, lightning does work on Vader. You have to remember that. Palpatine would always shock him, so you gotta be ready for that. Now, you're also very, very lucky because you're playing Pokemon with a bunch of wings on them, which means they can fly above the ground lightning strike, and then this will just immediately... KO all of your opponent's Pokemon for an easy win. Definitely have to be playing one Raigeki. Now, I know what you're saying. Vulcan, what if your opponent's playing Pokemon with wings? It actually states on the card that it will destroy all of your opponent's Pokemon. So, that, that's something that you just need to be aware of. Now, if that doesn't work, and let's say they do have a way around that for some reason, you can always hit them up with a very elusive 300 yen card. Now, I pulled this from Team Up not too long ago, but it was reprinted recently in Temporal Forces, so it it's legal for play, trust me, this is legal for play, and it's heavy, it's very heavy, and because it's heavy, you know where it is in the deck, and it's also in a different sleeve, but that's legal, don't worry about that, so, you know, you'll always know where that is, so if your opponent just, you know, you just throw that that way, maybe they buy themselves a corn dog, a hot dog, you never know, and you just use that, now, if they are the hungry type, you can immediately slam down the Pokey Cookie. The Pokey Cookie is a very good card that was recently printed, I believe, in Scarlet and Violet. So this card is actually really good because your opponent will most likely be looking at this. Um, they're going to go, oh my goodness, you know, I've been very hungry. Um, you know, mm, uh, mm. Yeah, but anyway, you know, this card, if you keep it in your deck, it should actually be very, very good. And, um... Well, we can't play that card anymore because I ate the cookies. Lastly, to make this deck work, you need all of the energy in the world. You need all the energy because it's going to take all the energy in the world to make this deck work. Now, we're playing at least 100 energy here because we need to make sure that we're always getting energy on our Charizard. Right? We need to make sure that it's on the Charizard. Everything else... They don't need energy to attack, but this Charizard, we definitely need to make sure that we have enough energy to build it up and do some damage. So, that is the deck that is 100% going to win a UIC. Uh, let me know in the comments what you would change about it, which should be absolutely zero, because this, this is perfection. I'll see you guys in the after party of UIC when this deck wins and I get to say, I told you so. Vulcan Turtle out.